in 2024. I might be out of business. Mark the words. No way. <laughs> in, a, in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch. Watch. God's people ain't that few. Yeah. <laughs> Prince. Some of us are against the Illuminati. We are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them and nobody likes them. Okay, so it looks like Hollywood is officially starting to push back against Cat Williams because word on the streets is that Diddy and Oprah have allegedly hopped into the situation to take him down once and for all. And considering how much tea Cat has spilled on these two in the past couple of years, it's not surprising that they would be coming for him. But hold up, because Cat is also claiming that they aren't only trying to silence him, but they are allegedly trying to unalive him for good because they know that he has some more serious dirt on them that could get them in legal trouble. Y'all, this situation just got crazy, and y'all better buckle up because it's about to be a wild ride. I'm going to tell you like I told Puffy, I don't let men take me out, sir. I'm good. I'll do no damage. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how they say that the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Oprah and Diddy appear to be taking this literally because, according to Kat, they are teaming up against him and trying to take him out. Allegedly. This shouldn't be so surprising, given that Kat has been speaking on them a lot and trying to expose their secrets in the past couple of days. Diddy was probably thinking that he was going to leave all that lawsuit drama in 2023 and start 2024 on a clean slate, but Kat said, psych, and spilled some pretty wild stories on Diddy that got the rumor mills going again. Honestly, it's not surprising why Diddy would be so mad at Kat for starting the drama all over again because the scandal was just starting to die down and he was already in the process of distancing himself from the drama and rebranding himself. Again, Diddy trying to do a rebrand isn't exactly shocking because do y'all remember the wild allegations that were made against him? First, there was Cassie who started the whole thing and she claimed that Diddy physically hurt her during the 11 years that they were together. We've always had concerns about the relationship but Cassie blew it up even more with her lawsuit. She claimed that Diddy forced and manipulated her into the relationship and he quickly got very controlling and would put paws on her whenever she did something that he didn't like. He also tried to hold her career back and on one occasion, when she tried to make some moves of her own by talking to a music producer in a club, Diddy got so mad that he put paws on her and beat her up until she started to throw up. Cassie also told stories of how Diddy would allegedly SA her and then pimp her out to escorts. She referred to those situations as freak-offs, claiming that Diddy Diddy would hire escorts with BBCs and force her with them. He even dragged her out of her birthday party to force her into a freak off. But that's not all, because Cassie also said something in her lawsuit that sent red flags waving, and Kat is now pointing it out. She spoke about how Diddy often tried to unalive his ops and take them out permanently. She said, for example, on one occasion, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's Drive-In Diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieved multiple guns from a safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. She also claimed that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive Kid Cudi because he found out that Cassie had been dating Kid Cudi after she left him. She said, Mr. Combs told Ms. Ventura that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cootie was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cootie's car exploded in his driveway. Yeah, going by this, Cat has a valid reason to be scared for his life because, girl, Kid Cootie didn't even do anything to Diddy because Diddy and Cassie were no longer together at the time, but Diddy still tried to blow Cootie up in front of his friends? Yeah, Cat needs to be very scared indeed because the word on the streets is that Diddy is very furious at him. If you're wondering why Diddy and Cat have their issues, it's because Cat, being Cat, went on the Club Shay Shay podcast and spilled the tea on a lot of celebs, and he went in and in on them, including Diddy, and he had a lot to say about Diddy, and his revelations started the conversation on Diddy all over again. Unless you've been living in a cave or completely out of the loop, you've probably caught wind of Diddy's recent escapades and the whirlwind of scandals surrounding him. Even before these bombshells dropped, whispers were floating around town about Diddy's alleged habit of making advances on young men in the industry, attempting to lure them into his bed for some hanky-panky. 
Word on the street is he even managed to tango with quite a few men, but you didn't hear that from me. See, the grapevine has been vibrating with chatter for a hot minute about Diddy's flirtatious exploits. We all thought he was just playing the classic game of hearts and flowers with the ladies, especially since he has like a million baby mamas. Little did we suspect that Diddy was casting his flirtatious net in every direction men and women alike. That man was sowing the seeds of love all over Hollywood, and he didn't discriminate, flinging his charm at anyone who caught his eye. The rumors about Diddy keeping it on the down low have been circulating forever, but most folks with the inside scoop tend to tiptoe around that topic, given Diddy's powerful status in the music biz. However, it seems like the floodgates are finally opening, revealing the secrets behind Diddy's closed doors. Usher was one of the first to peel back the curtain, giving us a glimpse into his teenage days living with Diddy. The stories he spilled painted a rather eyebrow-raising portrait of Diddy when the spotlight wasn't shining on him. But then Usher was smart enough not to expose Diddy directly, but he went through the corners to spill the tea and he sneakily made sure that we knew what was going on. Then there is 50 Cent, who seems to be one of the very few people who can directly look Diddy in the eye and expose him. 50 has been saying for a very long time about how Diddy is a bad guy who pretends to be good in public. He has been trying to expose the truth about Diddy's parties, like when he said, see, this is why I don't go to no party puffy and them at. Day f is going on here. Get the F off my young man, WTF. 50 Cent also tried to clue us into Diddy's secret shenanigans with men, and he even went as far as to call Diddy fruity. They go, when they do it, when he's doing he says <laughs> things, he doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. But for the longest time, everyone just shrugged off 50 Cent's claims about Diddy. I mean, come on, the guy's practically a professional troll, and folks figured he was just cooking up drama, especially considering the eternal beef between him and Diddy. But hold on to your hats, because the whole narrative did a 180 when Cassie, the queen herself, decided to take legal matters into her own hands. She filed a lawsuit accusing Diddy of not just being a bad boyfriend, but of hurting and manipulating her during their decade-long love roller coaster. And that's not even the juiciest part. She dropped the bomb that he allegedly pushed her into some wild rendezvous with male escorts dubbing them freak-off parties. Trust me, the lawsuit was so intense that it needed a trigger warning on the first page. Talk about spicy drama. Diddy probably thought that a settlement would be his ticket out of this mess, so he chose to settle. But that didn't slam the brakes on this roller coaster. Instead, it kicked off a wild ride for Diddy as more brave women stepped up with their own tales of being on the hurt him. One even claimed she was a minor when the alleged shenanigans went down. It had folks scratching their heads, wondering if this was just another episode of Diddy's infamous freak-offs. I mean, if Cassie's version is anything to go by, it doesn't sound like she had much of a say in the matter anyway. Now let's get one thing straight. I'm not here to play judge and jury on Diddy's bedroom escapades, cause what he does behind closed doors is his own business, you feel me? But let me tell you, the way he handled things has got everyone hot, cause it seems like he left a trail of hurt women. But wait, there's more drama to unpack. Diddy's bodyguard, the one and only Gene Deal, spilled a whole new kettle of tea, insisting that Diddy wasn't just a casual observer in these so-called freak-offs. According to Gene, these sessions were all about Diddy's pleasure. Remember Cassie mentioning in her lawsuit how Diddy handed her a checklist for hiring escorts? Well, Jean dropped the bomb that these freaky deaky shindigs were tailor-made for Diddy, not Cassie. And she said that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. So, you know, what you think about that? Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? <laughs> Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have s with her let's talk about gene and how he's not afraid to let the truth spill about diddy seriously it's like gene's been carrying beef with diddy for ages dropping truth bombs left and right even before the whole cassie situation hit the fan can you blame the guy though just imagine the wild stuff gene must have witnessed during his time working for diddy no wonder he's on a mission to spill every last drop of tea he's got Okay, so let's talk about Cat and his podcast, Bombshell. We all know Cat Williams is no fan of the shady side of showbiz. He's like the Sherlock Holmes of exposing the hidden, sketchy corners of the industry that fans rarely get a peek into. And when it comes to shady artists or Illuminati conspiracies, you couldn't pay Cat enough to zip it. Which is why it's kind of surprising that Diddy thought that it was a good idea to offer to pay Cat 50 million to sleep with him. I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yeah! you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. 
and you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. Hell. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them yeah, so can't, freely. Can't, 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 can't. Uh, just how down bad was Diddy for Cap because $50 million is an insane amount of money. Girl, Young Miami is his boo thing or shoddy wop or whatever, and he gives her $500,000 per month, which includes the alleged freak offs and everything in between. So if he was willing to pay Cat $50 million, then y'all know that he was down bad for him. But the thing is, what was going through Diddy's mind when he decided to make his moves on Cat or attempt some seduction? Like, seriously, did he think Cat was the type to keep things hush hush? Cat Williams is the last person you'd expect to keep shut about anything, and Diddy should have seen that coming. It's almost like he was begging to be called out, especially when you factor in that if there is one person with a knack for spilling the tea, it's Cat. But that's not all because Kat also said something about Diddy liking young boys and allegedly SAing young boys. Now, this isn't exactly new because Gene Deal outrightly called Diddy out for liking young boys, saying that it was an open secret in Hollywood. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into acts with him. There was a story that he was trying to get Chris Brown, there's stories about, you know, those young boys that he had, a group, B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry. Cat also hinted at this when he called Diddy and Jermaine Dupri out for allegedly essaying the Criss Cross boys. Huh. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupri, king of the if you ask me, baby. Jermaine Dupri, small as a child. Kat spilled the beans about some heavy allegations, claiming that Diddy and Jermaine had allegedly pulled some seriously shady moves on the Criss Cross boys back in the day when they were under Jermaine Dupri's label. Now, Jermaine had this knack for discovering talents in the most unexpected places, like a mall. So imagine this, he strolls up to two kids, offers them cash, and promises to turn them into superstars. Creepy. What makes it creepier is that both boys got the creeps from Jermaine as well because their instincts told them that he was a child P if you catch my drift. In an interview, one of the boys said, we were just playing video games in this mall in Atlanta when all of a sudden this dude comes up to us and said that he'd like us to work with him as rap musicians. We had no idea who he was. In fact, I told Mac Daddy that I thought the guy was probably a child yeah, he basically just looked at us all funny. Now, let's fast forward to Cat Williams talking about the alleged shadiness. He's basically pointing fingers at Diddy and Jermaine, suggesting there might be more to the story than meets the eye. And for obvious reasons, Diddy is not here for Cat spilling the tea on him because it's basically ruining his plans. You see, according to sources, Diddy was already making plans to rebrand himself and put things behind him. The interesting thing is that this is the second time that Diddy is trying to rebrand his career. Y'all know when he suddenly went from being Puff Diddy to being P Diddy? Well, this was his first rebrand because he was trying to distance himself from the club shooting that happened in 1999 when he and his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, were involved in a club shooting and Diddy caught charges over that. He almost went to jail, and he came this close to having his career ruined over it. Well, he got the charges dropped, but according to Kat, this is because Diddy allegedly set up his artist Shine to take the fall for him. Gene Deal also claimed that Diddy allegedly paid witnesses to testify against Shine during the trial. Those people were testifying, they were brought to Puff first, saying that they what they saw against Shine and what they saw Shine do. The DA didn't even know those people existed. You understand what I'm saying? Shine said it himself, y'all. The wild part about this is that Bad Boy Records then dropped Shine when he was in prison. Shine also confirmed that Diddy had betrayed him in a 2020 interview where he said, Puff apologized, he did apologize to me for that when we met in Paris. He did say that he could have handled it better, but he was under a lot of pressure from the lawyers to throw me under the bus. But Kat doesn't believe that the lawyers had anything to do with Diddy's decision because he thinks that Diddy was just being selfish. Well, Diddy had a major rebrand after that and went from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy, and eventually Diddy. Well, he is currently trying to rebrand, but now Kat is standing in the way because of his recent revelations, because it's making it hard for people to forget about so that he can move on and start the official rollout for his rebrand. So it goes without saying that Diddy is very furious indeed. 
But as it turns out, Diddy is not the only one who is mad at Kat because, as it turns out, spilling the tea on popular and powerful people in the industry doesn't exactly make them your besties. Chile, in the past couple of days alone, Kat has been dragged by many celebs, including Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish, and so many more. But apart from Diddy, one person who seems to be equally as furious at Kat is Oprah, and according to Kat, she has allegedly teamed up with Diddy to unalive him. And again, it's not surprising that Oprah would be this furious at Kat considering that he exposed her for being a hypocrite, a handler, and anti-black. Chile, Kat really spilled the tea on Oprah, and her public image has been shaky since cause people have been slamming her. Now, we've always seen Oprah as the queen of black excellence in Hollywood, right? I mean, she's all about lifting up the community, running a girls' school in South Africa, and don't even get me started on her self-made billionaire status. She built an empire from the ground up. But recently, insiders have been throwing the curtains wide open, dishing on what Oprah's really like behind the scenes. Kat was quick to jump into the situation, and he had a lot to say about Oprah, things that we never even knew before this. Sure, there were a few whispers here and there, but the real deal remained a mystery until Kat decided it was time to spill the tea. Kat pointed out how Oprah has been using her platform to work against black artists while pretending like she was an advocate. For example, when Toni Braxton went on Oprah's show to try to do some positive PR when she went bankrupt in the late 90s, Oprah deliberately set out to humiliate her and make her look bad. Let's set the record straight. Toni wasn't out there living the high life, blowing her cash on some wild luxuries. Nope, she fell victim to a bunch of financial shenanigans orchestrated by her advisors and made some not-so-wise investments, finding herself knee-deep in debt. The press had a field day tearing into Tony over this financial fiasco, prompting her to go into full-on damage control mode to salvage her reputation. And where better to do that than on the grand stage of one of the biggest shows hosted by a fellow black queen? So, Tony went on Oprah's show with a game plan to spill the tea and set the record straight. But oh boy, Oprah took an unexpected turn, diving into Tony's supposed lack of street smarts and money wisdom. Suddenly, Tony found herself caught in the crossfire, with Oprah making her look a bit, well, dumb and careless when it came to money. Do you take responsibility for the situation that you're in right now? 100%. 100%. 100%. How did that happen? Because I allowed all my finances to become everyone else's finances. That's pretty much how I got got here. I think the most important thing I learned is to trust and believe in myself um, and don't put all your, your trust and belief in someone else when it comes to handling your money. Oh, please, That's that is the, the first rule. I know, right? That is it's success 101. No. Oprah then clowned Tony for going broke. Tony grew up with the silver spoon because she grew up comfortable around money, and Oprah thought it was the perfect time to throw some shade. She mocked Tony about how she could no longer afford her usual designer clothes and her lavish lifestyle. Oprah even went as far as asking if Tony was planning to sell off her personal stuff to survive. B R O K E broke? Broke. Like broke. Like no money. No money. Yeah. Like net worth what? Negative. 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 She has filed for bankruptcy. Appraisers are now taking stock of her personal possessions, her baby grand piano, her Gucci silverware, her Porsche and Lexus. They're even counting her shoes and her Grammys. First of all, I didn't know Gucci made silverware. Uh, when you had Gucci silverware and baby grand pianos, and you, you're used to wearing five and six and seven thousand dollar gowns yeah. at a time and spending five hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. This was a mean thing to say to a woman who had gone broke, especially in public. But according to Kat, this was the type of person that Oprah really is. Kat also brought up how Oprah has treated black artists in the industry, including Monique. I'm sure y'all know the story of how Oprah tried to force Monique to work for free during the press run for the movie Precious, and when Monique refused to work for free, Oprah blackballed her and spread rumors about how Monique was difficult to work with. Oprah even spread some of the rumor on her own when she had an interview and she said, it's a law that if you meet negative with negative, you will just have a combustive negative force of energy. You can't meet negative energy where it is. You have to rise above it. You have to transcend it. I would never stop to try to meet somebody where they are negatively, don't care who they are. It's been more than 10 years and Monique's career still isn't where it should be. And it's all thanks to Oprah. Kat also pointed out how she did the same to other black artists on her show. But aside from the whole thing about her hating on her fellow black people, there's the concern SA cases that she has been indirectly tied to. I'm talking about ties to heavyweights like Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Yep, you heard that right? She was buddy-buddy with both of these guys. And the rumor mills churning with whispers that she might have known about their shady activities.
activities way before it all blew up. Remember in 2020, when there were rumors that Oprah's house got raided on suspicions of her being involved in an alleged trafficking ring? She denied the allegations and tweeted, just got a phone call that my name is trending and being trolled for some awful fake thing. It's not true, haven't been raided or arrested, just sanitizing and self-distancing with the rest of the world. Stay safe, everybody. Not only that, but Kat also pointed out how British actress Katie and Noble exposed Oprah and Naomi Campbell for helping Harvey Weinstein trick her and S.A. her. He was with people in which I admired dearly. He was with Naomi Campbell, he had Oprah Winfrey there with him, who entered the room and was swinging off his arm and just seemed like a very dear friend. Now, let's dive into that wild ride with the Brazilian dude, the one and only John of God. Oprah didn't just chat about it. She hopped on a plane and flew all the way to Brazil to meet this supposed spiritual guru, singing his praises like he was the real deal and all that stuff. She was so hyped that she even featured him on her show. But hold on tight, cause here comes the dark twist. John of God gets exposed for some seriously messed up activities. We're talking child and human trafficking, chaining women up, forcing pregnancies, selling babies for profit or their organs. It's like something out of a twisted horror show and Oprah's name was right there in the mix. Now, common sense would say Oprah should be front and center, addressing this hot mess, right? But nope, she pulls a total vanishing act. No apologies, no explanations. She just deleted the videos of them together, erasing any trace like it never happened, leaving us wondering if we all just collectively hallucinated the whole thing. She literally had us wondering if we were tripping or something. It's the kind of shady situation that should have set Oprah's reputation on fire. But for some reason, the citation didn't blow up. And if you're wondering why the US media didn't turn this into headline chaos, Kat spills the tea. Oprah's got some heavy-hitting friends pulling strings to keep everything hush-hush. Singer Seal also hinted that Oprah was lying about not knowing of Harvey Weinstein's crimes. He made a post on Instagram saying, Oh, I forgot, that's right. You'd heard the rumors, but you had no idea he was actually serially assaulting young, starry-eyed actresses who in turn had no idea what they were getting into. My bad, sanctimonious Hollywood. According to Kat, Oprah tried to unalive Seal after this, and she was so sneaky about it. Seal faced battery charges only five five days after calling Oprah out. The charges were dropped after a few days, but the interesting thing here is that an inside source revealed that Seal's accuser reported the singer to police in Los Angeles after she noticed that he had accused Oprah Winfrey of knowing about Harvey Weinstein's offenses in a damning Instagram post. For the first time in a long time, Oprah has found herself in the middle of a scandal, and Kat has a lot to do with that, which is why she is allegedly teaming up with Diddy to take Kat out. Allegedly. It goes without saying that Oprah and Diddy have taken the biggest hits from Kat, and according to sources, they have been allegedly scheming on how to take him out even if it means permanently. Kat appears to be genuinely scared, which is a first for him, and this had fans coming hard for Oprah and Diddy, and left comments saying, just a reminder, Cat Williams said Diddy wanted to sleep with him, and Cat never lies. Why is Diddy still in the closet? All the accusations Cassie made clearly showed he's gay. I love Cat, and I applaud him for having enough courage to tell his truth. People don't want to believe the evil that exists, but just like it's good people in this world, it's evil people out here also. And Oprah needs to understand that she's already been exposed, so if she tries anything with Cat, she will just expose herself even more. Chili fans are not here for Oprah and Diddy and it looks like Kat is untouchable to them because he has the backing of the people. Anywho, y'all drop your thoughts in the comments, then check out this next video.